you're in a very enviable, enviable position as the owner and the developer and the designer of Suri Bali. Uh, I'd love to know from your perspective what you think the benefits are um, being in that position and to be able to design with a holistic approach. Well, every architect dreams of being their own client, whether it's your kitchen or your bathroom, your house. This is a dream come true for me. When I wear all three hats, I feel um, responsible, but I do have control. And I'm able to push myself to try to design every aspect. Um, traditionally, an architect works with clients, clients representation, and usually too many consultants. As a result of having so many people, the vision is usually diluted. So to me, this is uh, an opportunity that I couldn't pass up. I can imagine. Uh, now, you touched on the bathrooms earlier, and obviously with tonight being hosted by our friends at Kohler, it was uh, only natural that we would end up talking about bathrooms. So uh, I'd love to hear about your thoughts in the role that the bathroom plays when you're designing a resort like Surrey and how that contributes to a sense of well-being for the guests. The bathrooms usually are a central part of a hotel, especially in a resort, because slowness is the reason you go to a hotel. You want to feel well. So the bathroom has to be designed in such a way that is uh, leisurely to use and in some ways different. Like, for example, a bathtub that is sunken on eye level to see the ocean or just showering outdoors. So to that extent, the bathroom designs and equipment needs to be well selected. Uh, they need to, to, to be a design that fulfills the purpose of with the economy of means and needs to enhance the experience when you're using these fittings. And I guess on that, just to, ex to sort of expand on that, that uh, topic, what role would you say the hardware plays, um, you know, with the fixtures and the fittings within a bathroom but also a spa? I think when you and I spoke perhaps last week, we were talking about well-being and particularly at Suri Bali that that sense of well-being ex extends well beyond just the spa. But within that and uh, that space and within the bathrooms, what role or how important is the choice of fixtures and hardware? I think when you think of a bathroom design holistically, the, the fittings and the hardware are essential elements because those are the touch points where the guests actually handle the fittings. It has to feel right and the design has to harmonize with the overall intent. And most of all, technologically, it should be easy to use and also serve to enhance the phenological experience of taking a shower or taking a bath. Yeah, and so, you know, now that we're living in this uh, COVID-19 era and everyone is um, particularly conscious of what we're touching and hygiene, uh, you know, a company like Cola, which has quite a large selection of products and hardware that are touch-free and automated and hygiene-focused, I'm, I'm curious to hear what your thoughts are on where technology and innovation uh, will influence the future of design, particularly for wellbeing. How much of a... Uh, an influence do you see that becoming down the track? I think at this moment is the conversation centers on rethinking product design as well. People need to feel safe um, and, and less contact means more hygiene. But over and above, I think when you have um, soft sensor motion fittings, it also aids in conserving the resource of water. So I think in terms of design, after this pandemic, designers will rethink um, not just motionless detectors, but what it means to actually enjoy the fitting as well without touching it. Mm. Um, so moving on from that topic, we, when we chatted earlier, we talked a, a lot about authenticity. And I think that was a word that you used a couple of times when we were talking about Suri Bali and approaching the design of that particular project from a holistic viewpoint. I'd love to hear from your perspective what authenticity means to you in that context. Authentic is a very general word. It can be applied to any circumstances, whether it's in a city or in a resort. But generally, to me, authentic means to distill, to distill elements to its essence, um, not to over-embellish, to design with economy and means, 
to be able to express the materiality in the correct way, but also to integrate craft and culture of a particular place. And that's new luxury. Being authentic is new luxury. I agree. And why do you think it's important to be approaching a resort like Bali, or maybe any project at all for that matter, from a holistic viewpoint? I mean, it, obviously, when you work with that philosophy, it touches on so many aspects, but why is it, um, why is it important to you? Um, first of all, to design a hotel that taps on wellness, you have to be sensitive enough to, to kind of feel the energy of the particular land. And I think uh, for a designer to be able to control the holistic aspects of design would mean be able to harness all the elements of the site and the conditions of culture to create a very sensitive resort. Uh, collaboration is good when you can find like-minded consultants. And we still collaborate with people. But the important thing is that in collaboration, everybody needs to have the same mindset. Uh, people is something else that you touched on earlier when we had an earlier conversation, and I think your words were that the, f the future is people or the future is about people. Are you able to expand a bit on that for us tonight? I think uh, there was a general statement that I made because the world uh, was on pause for a couple of months, and they're on pause simultaneously. And even myself, all of us, have had time to rethink what is important. Um, and I think at the end of the day, most people come out with the idea that um, understanding humanity and the environment is important, uh, being optimistic is important, uh, and being inclusive is important because this pandemic has also uh, created stark uh, focus on various groups because various groups experience a pandemic differently. So you realize that life is fragile and going forward, this will affect our thinking and that extends to designers as well. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm just going to check if we have any questions from the audience because I know we didn't have time for very many with the last session. Can I check that we've got... We have? Okay, all right. I'm, I'm just going to reach for my phone because that's where the questions are coming through from the audience. Um, we do. Okay, great. So... One, the first question is that obviously the Suri brand is owned by you. It was your development. You have Suri Bali and there's also New York. And I think you mentioned perhaps earlier that Niseko might be the next one. Um, what, how would you describe the brand positioning of the resort or the, the actual mm -hmm. brand itself, Suri? Well, Suri came from a combination of both my name and my wife's name. We are both designers. And base, basically, Suri brand is really um, a pure expression of what we like as designers. And Suri brand is about what I just presented, which is really getting to the root of, of the place and having a holistic uh, design control to bring in the best of a particular locale. Beyond, beyond that, it's not just about the hardware. I think hospitality means finding people with a big heart and a big spirit. And it was easy enough for us to do that in Bali. But even in our New York Surrey, we managed to find people, uh, a diversity of people from New York City, which is a melting pot, and they're all lovely. And they all exude the New York characteristics uh, of that particular place. So th that's what Suri Brand is. It's, it's really trying to design something that's rooted in culture. Fantastic. Uh, there's a question here about um, the SCDA style, I suppose. So it's more of a general question about your work uh, as an architect, but also as a multidisciplinary designer. So the question is, what elements define your style? I, I think uh, style varies. What defines SCDA is actually a structure or a language that has been continuously reinforced over a period of 20, 25 years. Um, so it's less the style, rather the underlying design structure. And I believe that structure is clear only because I was able to articulate it to the studio. 
and 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 that is a vehicle for us to design. But beyond the structure, of the design it can absorb climate, culture, and place. So in Bali, it takes on a bit of the Balinese element with a handcrafted construction. Whereas in other places, it takes on another element. Fantastic. Uh, another question is, um, and this might be a tough one: Which projects are you most proud of? It might be difficult to single out a, a few, but. Uh, if there's any that you're well, there's there's many projects that I'm proud of. Some better than others, and um, we are always trying to improve and get it closer to perfection. But obviously, Suri Bali, um, with all these imperfections, has a special place in my heart because I was able to actually do what I want in my own time, and being on the process from beginning to end, and even now operating the hotel and seeing guests enjoy the fruits of the product. Yeah, I can so imagine that must be very satisfying. The operational aspects are just as interesting. Yeah. Uh, so the next question is also related to Suri, and that's um, what motivated you to create the resort brand and, and operate it yourself? Because there is a little bit of a backstory there. I'm not sure how much of that you want to talk about. Yeah, I, I, well, when I started, I understood uh, hospitality as a designer because I work with different brands. So I hired brand, uh, Alila to operate it. But after a few years, I started to see that I wanted to create the resort in my own um, voice, in my own preferences. And when I took it over a couple of years ago, that's where everything came into sync because the hardware of the design and the operations and the software, choosing the right people to deal with guests came together. So it was almost as an accident, but now that we have it, I think it incorporates all my interests and concerns from sustainability to cultural understanding to just generally uh, enjoying the lifestyle element of the hotel. So that's how the brand came about. Fantastic. It's a compliment to SCDA. You think of SCDA, we designed the hardware. So Suri can conceptualize the experience, the programming. That's a great explanation. Um, uh, so this is a, another question about Suri Bali, particularly um, in terms of the current situation with the COVID-19 the operations of the resort and, and how do you envision how that might change uh, and how, you know, what, how it will need to change to cope with the new normal? Right. Yeah, we have had to close for a few months. We're happy to say that we have to keep all our staff because the staff are the core of the hotel. In terms of the new normal, to start with, I think our hotel is remotely accessible. It's not in a very busy place. But beyond the baseline of keeping safe, you know, every hotel has a practice, safe hygiene, uh, and their protocols, because we are part of leading hotels of the world, so we follow their protocol. I think the pandemic also uh, requires that people travel differently, experience a holiday differently. Maybe they're more likely to go to a accessibly remote place to relax, uh, to take a bit longer time at a destination because travel has become a bit of a hassle. So when people are there, they could stay five, six days. Um, beyond that, I think everyone is thinking what the future hosp hospitality might be. And I think it goes beyond um, hardware or, or, or sanitizing or, and so on and so forth. It has to do with the change in people's attitude. But I've seen the appetite for people to travel. We've seen bookings coming back up again but mostly for next year, where okay. people will feel safe again when the vaccine is developed. Interesting. And I'm curious, this is not a question from the audience, this one's from me. I'm, I'm, I think we talked about this earlier, but I'd love to have you chat about a little bit um, about how you've been keeping your staff occupied uh, while the hotel's been closed. <clears throat> um, we, we were at half strength and then everybody went home, but they, they're still employed. Uh, only key staff are in like, security and engineering. We took the opportunity to revamp some of the structures that needed to be revamped because the hotel is closed and also reinforce our, our operations and also take the time to conceptualize what 
the new hotel concept of being sensitive environment can be since we're in partnership with Palais. So it's a good time for us to rethink and reset. Yeah, I can imagine. Uh, so the, there is another question here about uh, well-being. So it's beside culture, sustainability, what other elements um, do you see being important when designing for well-being in interiors? It starts from the... Besides the culture and sustainability, what else right. is... Um, so, what other important so, uh, factors? Right, we have different programs. I mean, we have yoga classes. We, uh, for the longest time, we, we have on, on-site acupuncturists. And those are the soft programming of the space. Uh, we bring in gas healers. So those are programming. But beyond culture and sustainability, wellness, I think it's about also balance. When a design is in harmony and balance, you feel comfortable and feel rested. It's a choice of colors and materials. But beyond that, I think if you have a beautiful site, you can tap on the energy of the site. You feel good just being there. Well, Bali particularly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so there's a question now about the pro- sorry the precautions and any future projects that might be in the works um, to I guess uh, make the hotel safe post pro- post po- pandemic. Sorry. <laughs> um, mm. And do you see hotels coming back to normal or post COVID? Do you think that's an, an inevitability or? Will we forever be changed because of this situation? I think there'll be change. There'll be change, and uh, you know we are we are most interested in that. We had conversations, listening in seminars. Many hotels that we are working with, because I also designed for some other brands. They have developed meticulous cleaning and sanitizing aspects, including putting seals on doors or using phone to check in, or high touch points areas where they sanitize. I think all that can be done, but beyond that, I think it's the psychological uh, wellness and safeness that's important. How do you impart that with the guests? Make them feel safe without feeling you're going to a hospital, wearing PPP equipment and spraying down everything. So I think it's a balance, but the industry is interesting. It's developing and it needs a lot of rethinking, which also means it's a very exciting time to be in this industry. Time for change. Mm, I imagine. Uh, We have one more question about uh, technology and innovation uh, and how do you associate that with the wellbeing concept? I Uh, think... yeah, the technology, yeah. innovation, and well-being. Uh, I think there's a balance. Technology is there, and it's going to enhance well-being. But I, I think how you integrate technology without being intrusive, so that it can recognize preferences or or help you enjoy uh, the particular place, is important. But in the end, no amount of technology can replace um, the warmth of human interaction. Right, there was a lot of talk about like having robots to massage you or different things of social distancing. But at the end of the day, I I, I do think that I'm optimistic we'll resolve this in one way or the other with a vaccine, and people want to come back and enjoy the place in a more safe but still traditional way. I hope so. <laughs> We've had a lot of questions um, about well-being, but there's there's one more now about your work in SCDA, and the question is about what you're working on, um, you know, future projects and, and something that we might be able to look forward to in the near future. Anything that you're able to talk about? Um, I would like to do uh, more resorts, but it's not easy to do resorts uh, based on how I want to do it because when you do a resort there's usually a client and there's usually a brand so depending on the particular brand if there's alignment is great um, we are doing many different projects we are starting to do more cultural projects like the Singapore Art Museum uh, we are doing things in different places uh, but most of them uh, are not all hotel related they, they can be mixed use development so on those projects, we try to, to redefine and rethink 
how we can bring some of these elements into a city project. It's not the easiest thing to do. We had to rely more on technology to be sustainable there. Nice. Um, we have one more here, which is <laughs> it's quite a funny one. Um, what would you tell 27-year-old Su Kian Chan, <laughs> if you were able to go back in time, what would you tell your younger self about design and how to approach it? What life lessons would you teach yourself? I, I, I think the life lesson is really, looking back, is really to decide very clearly. And it, for me, it kind of just happened because I couldn't get my license easily when I came to Singapore because of my degree and so on and so forth. So actually, that was actually a good thing. When, when, uh, uh, when you are 27 and being a designer, especially an architect, uh, you need to realize that global, globalization is there. Even though now you, you see a bit of backtracking, you need to engage globally. And, and in order to do that, you need to be very specialized in an aspect of design so that you can export your service. Um, and you, it's okay to work for other people for a few years and not to just start on your own because you have a commission from your auntie or your parents because working for other people means learning very quickly by observing and understanding how you organize an office, so on and so forth. So taking it slow for the first few years, uh, it happened to me because I moved around but I think that's still good advice. I still say that to some of my students. Yeah, I think that's great advice. Absolutely. Um, well, I think we've actually got through all of the questions from the audience. Um, oh, actually, no, sorry. There's one more here, again, related to the current situation. Um, someone's asking about how you're presenting material to clients at the moment digitally, um, in particular material boards, which are obviously mm. normally very tactile, touchy-feely. Um, have you had to present something like that in this period of time? Yes. Um, we always wanted to do that. And it's taken a bit. So now that we are all on Zoom, even today, we are only 25% back in the office. We have had to digitize quite quickly and use the cloud to create cloud libraries of materials. And when these materials, while you can't, touch and feel them, uh, technology has allowed it to be so well represented uh, that we, it looks almost real. And, and, and then that gets incorporated realistic rendering. And when, <coughs> when materials are shortlisted, then we just send the samples, the actual samples. We replicate the, the digital sample, the digital palette with the real palette. So in, in a way, the process is going a little bit backwards. We use the digital library to put our samples first. <coughs> sorry. Um, uh, so that it seems like the transition has been relatively smooth for you. I, I, I was surprised and the, the bottleneck was really myself because uh, once I figured out how to use the technology, I think the, it, was, it was a lot easier for the whole office to, um, to be able to use the cloud to share uh, details and to be able to render in the cloud. So in a way you transcend uh, geography and I was able to communicate with my various offices on a level platform. Everybody seems to be in the same room and that's, that was helpful. That's really good to hear. Well, I think that's all we have time for tonight. We should probably cut it short before I have a coughing fit. Um, okay. Thank you so much, Sukian. It's been an absolute pleasure chatting with you again, and I hope it's not too long before we get a chance to catch up in real life. But um, thank you from myself and from Cola for your time, and uh, please stay safe. Thank you, Susie. Okay. Thank you very much. Good night. Bye.